Hey guys, Nicholas here, also known as Enmatis on Head 5. You know me as the guy with the Spock avatar. So, I got picked for the Meza 12 Classics review tour. I wanted to show you guys the 12 Classics and talk a little bit about what my experience with them has been. Um, in addition to the 12 Classics, I also got the 11 Neo. Um, they look a lot alike, don't they? 12 Classics have nice wood finish that Meza is known for, these wood shells. <clears throat> 11 Neo, they've got the aluminum shells. They do have some differences I'll go over during this video review. So stay put, okay? First, I'm going to start off with a little unboxing here. I'll show you around the box. So front, you know, this shows a nice picture of them. You're going to see kind of what you're buying into here, right? Got a nice OFC cable. It's got titanium driver. It's got a copper clad voice coil. Got a bunch of tips in the case. I mean, Got to have tips in the case, right? And it's got some comply tips. Again, a lot of, you get the marketing stuff on the back with some specs, right? So you got 16 ohm resistance. I believe it's 101 decibels per milliwatt sensitivity. Yep, right there. 101 decibels per milliwatt of sensitivity. High res certified, so these, you know, a bat can use these and hear that high end extension. I I can't hear that high. Sorry. Shows you a nice blowout diagram so you can see how they put them together, all this fancy schmancy. I like this. They've got an FR chart, right? So it's showing you <coughs> excuse me. Oh man, a little bit of a dry cough. Showing you that they sound fairly flat. Got linear bass, and then it's got a little tick up in the upper mids and lower treble. The rest of the box, you know, pretty boring. That's that's the box. Let me open them up. All right. There we go. That's your packaging. You get a little case with the Meza symbol on it. And they're all packed up right here. I'll be back in just a sec after I pull the stuff out. All right. I am back. I yanked all the stuff out of the case. So here is the carry case. Again, it's got the little Meza symbol on it. Flip it open. What do you get? You got your uh, pair of medium comply tips. I have not used these because it's a tour unit. I use my own. I've got a stash of them. Throw them away. Uh, or, sorry, I won't throw them away. Save them for the next person. You get a little shirt clip with Again, the Meza symbol on it. They like their branding at Meza, and that will come in useful. I'll explain why later on. Um, basic clamshell case. Little bag of tips. You get small, medium, and large single flange tips. And you also get a pair of uh, wide bore double flange tips. You know, dump them out in my hand. Y'all can see what they look like here. If I can get them to come out, or at least show you representative of each. All right. Um, hopefully, you can see the difference on the bores there, and it covers up my ugly mug for a minute. That comes important. Uh, that's important later on too, when we start talking about tuning. I I think I can see you through that wide board tip. That's pretty big. All right, what else you get? Of course, you get the 12 Classics. Here they are. They're pretty. I like them. I, I like the design. Let me unroll the cable here. All right. So you get 99 Classics. Again, nice wood design. You get an aluminum end cap with more Meza branding on it. Okay, this one, I mean, they come pre-installed with the medium tips. 
which is the size I use anyway. So that's the one I used. Pop the tip off. It's got some mesh on there, right? Mesh filter. Keep the debris and wax out. So you got to clean it every once in a while. I think we all know that. And that's all. It's all aluminum where it's not wood. So nicely constructed. Strain reliefs. They're not, they're, you know, they're pretty good. I'm not, I'm not dissatisfied with those at all. They feel good. The cable, um, let me get it apart here. Comes with an inline remote. Just play, pause, right? Sorry, show here. It's got a little button. Play, pause, take a call, end the call. It's got a mic hole. That's about it. Very basic, but Kind of nice because you can use it with Android or with iOS. I bounce back and forth between the two. <clears throat> that comes in handy if it doesn't have a bunch of buttons I can't use with one phone and not the other. Cable's nice and sturdy, right? Feels good. Um, I, I have a nitpick with the cable up here, which I'll get to in a minute. Y splitter, again, more, more Meza branding on it. And uh, it's aluminum. And again, she's got a little bit of strain relief right above it. And then below it, nice thick cable down below. Leading up to a gold-plated 3.5 millimeter jack. It's aluminum. Again, it's got the, the same strain relief that the earphones have. So, what do I, what do I like about this design? I like I like the aesthetics. I think they're attractive. I like the fact, and this isn't going to show up, I'm sure, on the video, but you'll, you'll take my word for it. I'm a fairly trustworthy guy. Um, I like the fact that the vent hole is right here. So right at the front of the shell where it enters your ear, that you're not going to pick up wind noise when you're outside walking around. That's important to me. I absolutely hate it when the vent hole is somewhere where that's exposed when you have the inner monitors in your ear and you go outside and you hear a bunch of whistling from the wind that's really frustrating when you're trying to go out for a walk and just get in the zone with the music or some of you guys going out for a run or a bike ride you know cycling around you need the bin hole somewhere where you're not going to get exposure to the wind that's just not cool all right i like as i mentioned before i like I really like the remote. I like a simple remote. That's fine. I'm not going to use the remote anyway. If this thing, if they came with a non-remote version, I'd buy that. I just don't need a remote because I listen with dabs. I don't, I don't care about it. <clears throat> the length of the cable is pretty good. I put my um, dab in my back pocket yesterday. It was walking around with it in my ears, you know, kind of here. It was fine. Of course, they weren't here because that's where my ears are, but I meant I didn't have Back of my head, I had them through the front, cable strung around, it was fine. Um, I mean, that's that's what I like about the design. They fit in your ears pretty well. They're, they're fairly small. You know, it's not a super huge IEM like you're going to get with some of the Dunus where they're a hybrid and they're pretty fat. You know, it's about, about the same um, length, but they have a really large diameter. Those don't fit in my ears so well. So these are nice because you can slip them in your ear and wiggle them around a little bit so you can find just that right position with your ear canal and it's not taking up your whole ear so they're a little more comfortable for me. <clears throat> now one thing that I've got a nitpick with here is the cable above the Y splitter leading up to the earpiece is a little thick and it's a little stiff. Um, it's not very pliable so it works it works well when you're wearing them down like this right but you want to wrap them around your ear this cable will not stay put so these are not very good for wearing over the ear that's one nitpick i have with them because I, I i like people to have choice so that's some feedback i gave to the meza team that's one thing that i do as a reviewer i don't know if other all the other reviewers do it so i know some of them do <clears throat> is that i often contact the company behind the scenes and let them know what i think are opportunities for improvement for their products so that they have better utility for their consumers. So that's one thing I would suggest to Meza is that they make sure they thin down that cable, make it a little more pliable above the Y splitter, 
You still want it to be durable, but you want it to be able to fit over your ear <clears throat> and have that cable snug up so that they stay put. And um, the other thing, I don't know, this is a personal preference for some people. I don't mind a straight jack. I mean, I think they're fine, but a lot of people like the 90 degree L plug. So for some people, you know, you're looking at this guy and you say, oh, I don't like that. It's going to put stress on my, on my headphone jack. Yeah, yeah. It's just a matter of taste and what you're comfortable with. I'm fine with this. I have pretty small dabs and I walk around with them in my hand or I put it in my pocket and I don't feel like I'm overly stressing the jack. So that, that's me. And I use my daps a lot and I've got quite a few of them. I haven't encountered a problem with that yet. Um, I'm sure somebody out there will somebody out there will leave a comment and say, Oh, you're gonna destroy it, Nicholas, but haven't had that experience so far. <clears throat> what else is there about these? Oh, uh, the cable is a little bit microphonic, right? Bangs around on you while you're out walking around. So I'm glad they included the clip. Just put that clip on, clip it to your shirt. You won't have as much problem as you would if you're going to let this thing just flop around. So use the shirt clip. I'm advocating for that. Use the shirt clip, guys. <clears throat> now I'll get to the tips later or what what sound changes the tips have but one thing that I would advocate for and I, I let them know that I would like this is not only to have these single flange more narrow bore tips these are, these are pretty narrow um, but I would also like to see some some of these guys included you don't have to be this exact type, right? But some nice, or let me just pop it on here. You can see the difference between the two. Well, so you know what these are, but some of you might not. So I would, I, I contacted Meza and said, hey, it'd be really nice if you put on some really wide board tips. And I'll go into why later on, but they don't include any wide board tips. So when I was testing them out, I threw on my JVC spiral dots and they, they make a difference. They certainly do. And some of you will like it and some of you will not like it, but I always advocate for more choice for the consumer. So I think if Meza included those, that would be fantastic for you guys. So you have more choice and you're able to tune your IEMs the way you want. And I also I threw on the, you can again see a little bit of difference there, right? You got a wider bore double flange tip. I actually had a little bit of a hard time getting this double flange tip to stay put in my ear. And I think if they'd included one that was just a little bit smaller, it would have helped me stick in my ear better. So I let them know maybe a couple of pairs of double flange tips, one medium and one small would be better. Cause this one, I mean, it sounded good. I like the way it sounded, but not if they don't stay in my ear. Well, <clears throat> and that's a personal thing. Doesn't mean it won't work for you guys. It'll work for some of you, and some of you will have the same problem that I had. It's just not going to fit very well. All right, so I think I'm going to take a quick break and be right back in a minute. I'm going to show you some of the gear that I used for testing these. All right, guys, I am back. I'm going to show you some of the gear that I used when I was testing out the 12 classics. First up, budget dap. Shanling, oh there I am, Shanling M1. Cutest damn little dap you'll ever see in your life. I mean this thing is it's adorable. I like this guy. I was using it with the um, 12 classics yesterday when I went out for a nice fall walk through my neighborhood. Easy to drop in your pocket. Sounds a hell of a lot better than my one plus three phone. I gotta tell you that. That thing sounds atrocious. This thing sounds nice. So I use that. Um I also used his big brother. The Shanling M5. It's more powerful. And it's got a better DAC in it. This thing sounds so smooth and refined. It's such a nice stab. I love it. I'll probably do a video review on it in the near future. 
Um, but this thing is fantastic. So I've used it, used the 12 Classics quite extensively with the Shanling M5. My last video review, I showed you these guys. The Terry Player G1 and the Nuanza A1 amp from Revamp Acoustics. I've used the 12 Classics with just the G1 and with the stack. I gotta tell you, every time I used the 12 Classics with a better DAP, it brought them up to a whole new level. So I said, hey, just for you guys, I'm gonna bring out the big guns. I would, I don't know that I would usually do this with a pair of in-ear monitors that cost less than hundred bucks, but I brought out the Lu 2 Pa Gold and used the 12 Classics with the Lu 2 Pa Gold. And I posted about that and it honestly blew my mind how well they scaled with the Lu 2 Pa Gold. It was a very good pairing. So let me let me grab these guys down here again. <clears throat> so what would I say about the 12 classics? <clears throat> First off, when I'm using the stock tips, so these medium narrow bore tips, or you know, yeah, I'd call them narrow bore tips. The sound is a little warmer. It's kind of their default sound, right? So the default sound is warm. It's got a little bit elevated bass. The mids are still very present, but pretty neutral. But you know, they're not recessed mids. And it's got a nice boost in the guitar crunch and the cymbal range, so everything sounds nice and crisp. Right, so I mean that sounds pretty good. Now when I rip these off and I put on the double flange tips, things leaned up a little bit because it's got that wide bore on there. So when I threw on those double flange tips, then the bass was reduced a smidge, brought the mids a little bit more forward, brought the treble a little bit more forward. Not a night and day difference, but a little bit of sound tuning. Now, when I popped off these uh, stock tips and I put on the spiral dots, I mean, you can see, not there are two things here. One is it's a lot wider bore. The other thing is it brings the driver, you know, that plane where the the IEM ends and the driver is in there. It's all coming forward into your ear canal more so than these. There's just less silicone in between your ear canal and the driver with the spiral dots. And you get even a leaner sound. These um, had lean type bass and they sounded really crisp. Okay. And I don't have my comply on here, but when I put the comply on, we go in the opposite direction. Then they get warmer than they get with the medium stock or these uh, more narrow bore stock tips. So with the comply on, it got a more bass presence. The mids are about the same, but it knocks the treble down just a little bit, smooths it out. So they sound a little bit crispy for you with uh, the stock tips on. Throw on the comply and it'll take care of it for you. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention was kind of these pairings here, right? I, I guess I mentioned it before. As you move up the food chain in your source, <clears throat> these responded very nicely to it. I was actually surprised. And like I said, with the low Tupac Gold, it shocked me how well these responded to the low Tupac gold. The bass, I was listening to some electronic music, the bass responded much better than I thought. It was very, very punchy. It was visceral. I could feel the impact. I was not ready for that because I hadn't heard that with the other sources yet. 
<clears throat> they responded well. It was punchy, but I didn't feel it was as visceral as with the low two pa goal, which I think I will call LPG from now on because it's a heck of a lot easier. And the highs sounded nice and defined, but not overly crispy. It just sounded more refined, smoother, yet still maintain the detail with the LPG. So if you're going to listen to these out of a DAP, it makes sense to listen to out of a DAP instead of your phone. They'll scale. Don't use your phone unless you have a really nice phone like the V10 or the Axon 7. You know, it's got its own DAC and AMP chipsets. Don't use your phone with these things. They'll sound a lot better out of a DAP. At least that's my experience with phones versus DAPs. I know some people on there are DAP haters and they love their phone, but I got to tell you, most gear, even easy to drive in your monitors, sounds a hell of a lot better with the DAP than they will with your phone. Okay, so I think we've established the basic sound of these guys. And um, I, I would say that for me, I think these do very, very well at their price point, right? These are sub $100 in your monitors. And when I plug them into a good DAP, I feel like they probably cost a little bit more than 100 bucks. I think they scale very well. They put out a very nice sound for their price point. They punch above their weight. I'm very impressed with these. And I think you guys would be impressed with them too. Now, I think I'll move on. I'm going to just grab, um, grab their brothers here. Almost everything is the same about the... Um, Aesthetics, the ergonomics, all of that's going to be the same with the 11 Neo. So with the 11 Neo, you got the same titanium driver, the titanium coated driver. You don't have the copper clad voice coil and you have an all aluminum shell. But other than that, it's pretty much the same thing, same inner monitor. And they sound similar, but they don't sound exactly the same. The 11 Neo has a warmer base. The base isn't as tight as it is with the 12 Classics. So, I mean, it's not boomy, but it's just a little bit, it's a little bit uh, softer. It lasts a little bit longer. They know the, the notes, the decay, they last a little bit longer. <clears throat> the lower mids are a little more present. The um, upper mids and treble are more relaxed with these, but not as present. So these guys give you a nice, warm, smooth sound. So I, I like the two in your monitors together. They seem to complement each other well with the 12 Classics definitely being at a higher technical level. You hear more detail with them. The bass is tighter. The mids are a little less present though in the in the 12 classics these guys these are a little more of a fun iem but at the same time they're very relaxing it's not one of those big v-shaped fun iem where it's pounding you with bass and hitting you with super crispy high uh, high notes you won't get that with these you get a nice smooth sound that's just it's warm smooth relaxing and it's very enjoyable listen and the same thing about the tips holds true with these. You know, put on some wider board tips and the base leans out a little bit and it brings the, the uh, upper mids and treble forward in the mix a bit. So when I pulled out the um, 12 Classics, you noticed I had the stock tips on them. That's what I prefer with the 12 Classics. I like them with the stock tips. It makes them a little bit warmer relaxes the treble just a little bit. That's my preference. Um, with the uh, 11 Neo, I like these guys. I like the uh, wider board tips. So for these, I I put on Meza's double flange tips. Like I told you before, they don't stay in my ears that well. So for, for the uh, 11 Neo, I actually like the um, I like these spiral dot tips on them. They open them up a little bit more. They give you a little more definition up top, make the base a little bit tighter. 
So that's what I would that's what I would suggest for you guys. If you're going to get the 11 Neo, throw on some of those spiral dot tips. And again, Meza, you know, if you listen to this, get some wideboard tips thrown in the bag. Some single bore, or sorry, single flange wideboard tips. Throw those in, and you'll make your consumers even happier. Because these are good IEM too. And I would say with the with the 11 Neo, the way they sound. I think these are, you know, they sound good for their price point. They might punch a little above their weight, but I, I think these are these are more aligned with their price point than the 12 Classics. I think the 12 Classics really do punch above their weight class. I think they're a darn good IEM. I told Antonio so. So there are a few things I would change you know, about the cable and <clears throat> some additional tips thrown in the bag. But overall, just like, Big thumbs up with those 12 classics. I think you did a fantastic job with them and they punch above their weight point. These guys are really nice too. They punch a little above their weight class. That it's it's not you know like they're knocking out knocking out guys twice as uh, twice the weight of them or something. So that is the uh, 12 classics and the 11 Neo for Meza. I enjoyed them both. And I think owning both is nice. They're kind of complimentary. I've said that on the thread already a few times. So I hope I pounded it in on the thread, pounded it in here. Which one you, you know, if you want them at all, you know, if you're interested in that, a single dynamic driver, coherent earphone, uh, which one you get depends upon what you prefer. If you like tighter listen with a little bit, you know, tighter bass, crisper highs, Go for the 12 classics. It's not that much more money. It's like $10 more. You want a smoother listen? A warmer listen? 11 Neo. And again, you can tune each one a little bit by tip rolling. So you can get the sound you want out of either one. For me, I would go for the 12 classics because if you really want a little warmer, a little warmer, smoother listen, throw the comply on there and you'll get it. You get a little bit warm listen, but still with the nice treble with the single flange tips, throw on some spiral dots, leans it up quite a bit, and you have you have a nice, uh, it's not you know, like analytical level, but you know, a more reference type sound out of them. So I hope that gave you guys a nice overview of these two inner monitors from Meza. I liked them both. I think you guys will like them too. They're not going to break the bank. You can buy both of them for like, you know, less than $200. I think it's in the 150, 160, I think it's 150 bucks. You can get both of them. No, it might even be less. It might be, uh, gosh, I think it might be less than 150 bucks for both of these guys, which is a steal. You know, with inner monitor and headphone prices rising sky high these days, it's great to see companies like Meza putting out product that is reasonably priced and performs well. It's fantastic. And these sound as good as some in ear not these, the 12 classics sound like some damn fine inner monitors. I could see paying 150 just for those. And I think it'd be worth it. Some of you won't, but I think they're I think they'd even be reasonable for them. Mezzo's price these guys very reasonably. They're a good company to deal with. Um hold on. I'm gonna grab something. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. I grabbed something. So I was one of the early reviewers for the uh, Meza 99 Classics, and I loved them. I had a few nitpicks with them, to be honest. And I let um, Antonio and the Meza crew know about those nitpicks. And I, again, I just mentioned right before the break that Meza is a great company to deal with, and here is one example why. I know one thing that I suggested when I reviewed the 99 Classics was they came in walnut with gold trim. Personally, I found that a little too bling bling. I wasn't into the gold. I like black and silver wood and that's all good with me, but I'm not a big gold man. So I said, please make them with silver accents. I think that would be a really good option for your customers. And I think you guys have probably seen it before, but yeah, they did that really quickly. They came out with the silver accents. They're probably thinking of it on their own anyway. I mean, I can't take the credit for it with as fast as they responded. 
uh, with the product change. So now they've got the white, I think it's white and uh, silver. Yeah, that's right, because they had the white and silver. And they had the gold and walnut, and now they got walnut and silver. And I think these are really attractive headphones. The next thing I mentioned to them was the ear pads. The ear pads they had before were too shallow. They didn't fit over my ears very well. My ears were always touching the driver covers, and that was not comfortable. And I think it compromised the sound. Um, so I suggested deeper pads. So they'd fit around my ears better. My ears would nestle inside well, and they wouldn't touch the driver covers. When I went to RMAF, I stopped by their booth to say hi. They had a pair of 99 Classics sitting out. I grabbed them. I threw them on my head. Gave a listen. Oh, they sounded great. You know, I love that sound. And my ears didn't touch the driver covers. I was really happy about that. Um, so I bought a pair because I hadn't bought a pair yet. The thing that really held me off was I did not want my ears touching the driver covers. So, guys, they've got a new. Uh, they they've got the new pads coming out with the 99 Classics. Your ears will not touch the driver covers. It opens up the sound a little bit more, reduces the bass just a little bit, you get your ears back from that speaker. They sound even better than before, and they're more comfortable than before. You can get them in the nice black and silver and walnut, which I think looks even better than before. Okay, the one thing I'd still recommend to Meza is the cable has a nylon, it's a nylon fabric covering on the cable above and below the Y splitter. And that goes both for their remote cable and it also goes for their you know longer home listening cable and i gotta tell you that with is really scratchy right and with the exit straight down out of the cups where is the cable going to go straight down on your shoulders hits your shoulders scratches around on your clothes and you can hear it, it gives microphonics so what i would highly suggest to Meza, and I gave this feedback in my review. If any of you guys out there own the 99 Classics and want to provide this feedback too, maybe it's just my nitpick, but I bet other people experience that scratching and microphonic sound as well from the fabric cable, that I gave them feedback that a cable that was fabric below the Y splitter, but had a more conventional plasticized sheath above the Y splitter would be better. It would be a uh, you know, nice pliable plasticized sheath above the Y splitter would reduce the scratchy microphonics. Um, and the other thing would be if they can swing it in their cups, you know, the next time would be angling out that jack, you know, angling out the connector for the wires. And that way it projects it forward from your shoulders. I know Hi-Fi Man changed that with their planars. They used to be straight down, angled out to the front, much better. Really like that a lot. So anyway, I'm, I am super glad though that they responded so quickly and positively to reviewers and their customers asking for changes in their products with regards not only to the aesthetics, but also to the comfort and the sound. Good job, Meza. I, I think it's a great company. I'm quickly become a Meza fan. And with that, I'm about done. Um, beyond the 99 Classics at RMAF, I also got the AudioQuest Nighthawks. Again, the Nighthawks on sale. The AudioQuest Nighthawks on sale for $350 right now. I would highly advocate for you guys picking up a pair with uh, the new cable they're coming out with soon. It's good. I've got an advanced copy of it. I also have an advanced uh, pair of their velour pads. Great. They make... I think they're going to make a lot of head fires happy. They lean up the sound a little bit. Um, personally, I just find Nighthawks sound rich and warm and sweet, but a lot of people think they sound woolly, and those new pads help to take care of that. They still sound nice and sweet and full, but just, just not quite enough, I think, to make a lot of head fires happy. Last thing I was going to say, uh, if you follow the Nighthawks thread at all, you know that we're... We're a bunch of fun guys, and we don't just talk about Nighthawks. We've also been talking a lot about, what? B-52. 
beer lately. All right, in Denver, here's a brewery I visited, and here's some homework for y'all. See if, you know, if you're a beer drinker at all, and you like sour beer at all, like I do. I'm a big Belgian beer fan, and I love sour beer. That Crooked Stave out of Denver, top-notch. I mean, seriously top-notch sour beer. I think, I mean, I, I always go to the beer store, and I've got some with thousands of beers that I go to. And I have not had as good of a sour beer outside of Belgium, I think, is Crooked Stave. So if you guys find Crooked Stave anywhere, they have a Saison, they've got a Flanders Red, and then they've got both of those with, uh, and some Lambic style, with or without fruit for all of those, give them a shot. I mean, they're not even that expensive. I was surprised at how inexpensive their beer is, even outside of... Colorado, and they have to bring it all the way out here to Portland. Really good stuff. Um, out competes our local sour brewery. I hate to say it, but these guys have it nailed. Our guys have some catching up to do out here in Portland to catch up with these guys. Um, so, homework if you want to, one, check out the Meza 12 Classics, 11 Neo, and 99 Classics threads. And then, if you're a beer guy, or a beer gal, check out Crooked Stave. Really good stuff. And I'm going to wrap now. I hope you enjoyed this. It's fun talking to y'all. And happy listening. Until next time. Bye-bye.